Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Next, our podcast and blog series where we talk about startups and innovation. My name is Giovanni Vacari. I am a program director here at Startup Bootcamp. And today it is my pleasure to interview Vanessa Yudison Kohn, our amazing mentor and expert. She's going to talk everything about compliance. Welcome, Vanessa. Thank you for this warm welcome. Thank you for being here. Compliance, it's something that startups don't know often a lot about. People think it's maybe boring, but it's super important and exciting. Well, thank you so much for this great introduction. I fully agree with you. Um, because compliance, it's a bit of a container um, well, term. Um, but actually, it all has to do with being as an organization in control with rules and regulations, norms and values but also on behavior and integrity. And still, of course, this sounds as, I think, something uh, <laughs> difficult to touch upon, but um, it all has to do with um, yeah, people need to understand a bit of the law. So in your normal life, you also know that, uh, okay, we live here in Amsterdam, I know, but that you're not allowed in principle to walk through the red light. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and laws and regulations are actually here mainly to help us to get a bit of understanding how we interact with each other. So, yeah, being in control is also a huge something uh, because you can, of course, never be 100% in control of all the rules and regulations, especially yeah. it's so much. So that's why it's so important to think about with who is my organization and what type of risk appetite do I have? Yeah, I, I've met a lot of startups that had to go through a compliance process to get invested or to get uh, an ISO that was needed for them. And uh, what I always hear is that being compliant in the beginning, it's such a pain. But at the same time, whenever they come after it, they're like, well, actually, it bettered our process. It made our processes much better. It made our company much more mature and much more structured. And actually, it is so beneficial to go through the process of compliance. That in the beginning, you say, oh, it's, it's a duty. I have to do this because they're asking me to do this. But the results are positive all around because you do become a better company from it. Do you see that as well in the startups you advise? Yes, I fully recognize what you're saying. Of course, um, as a startup, you're looking into what is my playing field. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a great idea. You want to move fast. You probably foresee that you want to scale uh, in, in the near future. If you're a good startup, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when, if you want to be a good startup, also take into account that um, you take on compliance from start because it also has to do with what type of culture do I want in my organization? Um, what, what kind of habits do we think are okay? Um, so if you start not putting the bar too high, but just start with compliance from start, uh, it will take you um, maybe some efforts, but in the long term, um, it will well um, help you to um, well make sure your reputation stays okay, that you don't face any fines or lawsuits or whatsoever, because that's all the things you want to get far away from, right? Yeah, and it avoids a lot of future cleanup as well, right? Because cleaning up compliance mess, especially when it comes to data privacy and how you file the data of your users, I mean, that is a lot of work. Um, right now, compliance is almost like an umbrella term, right? Let's, let's, let's say it, I, I think it's misunderstood a lot because of that as well. How can you be compliant nowadays? Let's say you want to start compliant and you're a startup that ha gathers user data. How can you start with that? Well, indeed, as said, start early with compliance. Embrace it so it's in your DNA. Um, look into what's your culture and your moral compass. So um, make sure it's not st it sticks to one person, but it's for um, several roles that you share this compliance point of view. Uh, in everything you do, your talk and your walk, they're always the same. So um, you have um, a continuity on what you're doing. Um, and start simple, write down the things you're doing and why you're doing it. I think the why is really important. If you understand that, 
it makes life way easier. And don't start with um, well huge administration processes and writing thick papers because people get bored. Uh, so what do you want? You want to make this something from all the people in the startup. Mm -hmm. So talk about it often. Um, and do it smart because you guys are often the smart people eh, inventing new things. So use the technology to set up controls. Um, eh, think about, you were saying data, for example, on um, user authentication, the login, but also if you enter into an office, make sure that you know who's coming in and out and that they don't take your val valuable assets, meaning and the thing you were just using in your startup as an innovative new thing. Um, so, um, yeah, make sure it's easy adoptable and that it's not like a tick box exercise because then you better do not do it. That won't work. I think it's also important to not have one person. I think what you said is really clever. You can have one person that helps you, of course, design these processes and design like Okay, how can we be compliant in this area and in that area, but not to put one person that is solely responsible for that on the, uh, on the as well on the implementation on the day to day, because otherwise that will become the most hated person in the company. And everybody's like, why are we doing this? Uh, why is everybody bothering me about the GDPR and the this and the that? It needs to be ingrained on everybody's role, because again, this is not something that is annoying or that is boring. It is for the health and safety of your company. And it's there to, ha to help you and your users as well, of course, not just to the benefit of the company, not to sound super capitalistic, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but indeed. And if I want to, uh, I, like practically speaking, what are the best ways to, to, to do it every day? Every day? Well, I think, um, as said, just start with discussing about what do we think is important, why are we here, what is our legal framework. Mm -hmm. And if you capture that and you can in an easy way um, put in controls in your uh, system, <coughs> um, that is already very helpful because compliance is uh, often going hand in hand with legal, with data protection, with um, well, all these, uh, these things. So... Um, um, if you share this all together and um, also when you see people want to step out of that and act differently, have a dialogue. Uh, make sure that, as said, it's really in the DNA of everyone. Because if you start this type of habit from scratch, it will be way more easier than later adapt and try to fix things. Yeah, I think moving fast and breaking things works up to a certain point. Whereas moving fast is more important than the breaking things part, I have to say. Breaking things, uh, that, that, that is the slogan of Facebook, move fast and break things. Yeah, you got to have some level of care nowadays. It's not like you can just keep emailing people left and right or, or not have a, a compliance or not have a, a, a legal framework. As you say, when you get clients in, that's the first thing they're going to ask. That's the first thing, that, okay, where are the files stored? For how long? Um, yeah, how, how, how is my data processed? And... I think once you're faced with these questions, it's much better to already have an answer um, than to be caught by surprise and, and be taken as, yeah, unprepared, perhaps. Which, is, which leads me to my next question, sorry, but horror stories. I love <laughs> stories when things go wrong because it teaches how to do it right. Do you have a few for us? I definitely do. Um, I think actually often when you just... Um, open a newspaper or uh, open uh, the news on the internet, um, most items are related to non-compliance. Um, I can think of Uber with um, uh, quite some privacy issues. Um, I can think of ING, who had in the Netherlands the highest fine ever, 757 million Whoa, for what? euro, for um, not putting enough um, security on money laundering for their customers. Um, but also, there are many fraud cases, bribery, uh, the LIBOR case you might have heard of. Um, it's, um, yeah, a lot is happening. But also, for example, now these days, eh, there is 
this unfortunate uh, war between Russia and Ukraine, um, loads of countries like US, um, the Netherlands, UK, Europe, uh, issued sanctions, meaning that you cannot do business with certain people. Um, mm -hmm. But um, it's going further than that. For banks, for example, it's very uh, difficult because all the transactions they see which are going through the accounts, they have to check and make sure that you do check that it's not the person who it's coming from or going through, but also the person behind it, that you check if that's all safe, if you're not um, um, hitting any sanctions. But the same might be if you're exporting goods, for example, and only a tiny part of it is listed as dual-used goods, meaning it can be used, for example, for military purposes, mm. um, you're, you're hitting already these sanctions. So, um, yeah, areas you don't want to walk into uh, with your eyes wide shut. <laughs> yes. uh, so you better make sure on forehand what is the landscape I'm dealing in and mm -hmm. how can I make sure that I never get um, uh, into this uh, negative news or hit a reputation or risk or... Uh, and how can I know? I say, okay, I mean, I'm in shipping. I'm a startup supporting shipping. Data goes through me, but I'm not responsible for the shipping. How can you know to which parts do you need to be compliant and to which parts you're not actually legally responsible? Yeah, very good question. I mean, as a startup, you um, are looking into the field with your idea why it's working and why it's not, right? Mm -hmm. So in this exploration phase, this is also a very important item to look into. Use your network. Um, um, and uh, also uh, here at Startup uh, Bootcamp, you have uh, a lot of mentors you can also uh, liaise with to get a bit more feeling, especially in case of if it's a gray area, yeah, make sure you check it because uh, you better be um, safe than sorry. Indeed. I, I know a lot of startups that use loopholes such as startups for uh, for mental health that say, well, we're a marketplace, we're not a health company, therefore we don't need to be compliant with health regulations. But until a certain point, you need to right, look at that gray area and have it very clearly and thoroughly checked. I think that's, that's the message. What kind of professional should I be looking at if I'm looking to know, mm, do I need to be compliant? Am I compliant? How do I find this professional? Uh, well, you, uh, the good thing is to get a bit of more knowledge on which area are you into. So mm -hmm. you have all type of compliance officers, but all types of um, people with the legal knowledge, but also on the information security type. So I think that's very important. If you're not sec secure, um, you better first check what is it about and what type of person would match there. Um, and then you better... Um, uh, do a checkup or you can go to an auditor who also are not only auditing but also can give advice um, to help you out mm -hmm. so um, I think there's a lot of knowledge around you yeah make use of it indeed and advice from the internet a lot of startups well, not all startups can afford a professional is there a safe place on the internet to check for this advice or would you say oh maybe don't google if you're compliant, you really need a compliance officer. Um, you know, at the startup phase, I think you don't have um, that much uh, of options to put on a whole huge team of people. Oh. So you have to balance there every now and then. But um, um, yeah, you can Google a lot. There's out there a lot to find also the do's and the don'ts. So that can be helpful. Um, but I think, yeah, from start, it's important to make this, um, yeah, an, an important part of your your entity. So uh, maybe not per se second compliance officer, but someone with the legal knowledge already on board or a uh, mentor in that area. Exactly, mm -hmm. that uh, that can help you out. If you uh, if people have a question to you, can they reach out to you perhaps as well? Of course. I mean, uh, I, I'm very excited that I um, recently joined uh, Startup Bootcamp as a mentor. So nice. um, I'm here to help you. And how can people find you? 
Um, for now, still through, through the LinkedIn and of course through our podcast. And uh, soon I will also uh, get my profile on your uh, site. Nice. So the, your, your LinkedIn would be Vanessa Hudson Cohn, correct? Correct. Nice. Okay. So just so people can find it, uh, you can text her there. She will try to help you with the best uh, of abilities, but also maybe a meeting or right a, a session as well is also always helpful. Absolutely. I'm here to help you guys. Um, I have around well 20 years of knowledge now. I started as a lawyer at one of the bigger law firms, and then I joined uh, the business industry. And um, well, mainly I started up. Uh, often the compliance or the legal uh, framework within the entity, the risk, the governance. So um, I've seen quite a bit, so more than help, uh, happy to help you. Nice. And also my network is also huge. So, um. well, That's important, right? Knowledge and network. That, that is a top mentor <laughs> right there. Question for you. What do you think are the biggest challenges now in compliance for startups? I think, um, and we talked a bit uh, already about uh, cybersecurity, that's still a very hot topic, um, especially maybe now with the war we were just saying, that already a cyber war is yeah, yeah. more and more going on. We've seen that already the last Imminent year, chair. that it's um, yeah, uh, making big steps, unfortunately. Um, data protection, also very important uh, um, subject same uh, a bit related to privacy but maybe as a more general one also conflicts of interest is very important to keep in mind like um, that you might have several hats on as uh, within your uh, startup yeah but yeah always keep in mind if these are um, yeah if you can shift them if you can put these different hats on at the same time or every now and then say it's a segregation of duty, someone else takes this task. So then we have more, um, we're dealing with a moral compass. Yeah, as well as if you have clients, if you're working in one industry that doesn't have a lot of variety of clients, let's say if you are aiming for really big clients in the energy sector or in the food sector, beverage sector, I mean, you're going to have conflicting clients as well. You're going to have clients in the same industry, in the same business. You need to also have a policy for that. Exactly. And even more, if you're in it uh, personal as well, um, yeah, for example, um, uh, from a loan perspective or yeah. Um, yeah, just make sure you organize these things well. And if you're in case of doubt, you know, you better get some advice. And advice is what we do here uh, in this podcast and at Startup Bootcamp. What is your advice then for startups? Uh, just to, to wrap here the podcast, what is your advice for them on compliance? Um, start easy, start early. Uh, don't put your bar too high, but, um, you know, just start with mm -hmm. being compliant. Give it an um, important place in the organization make sure it's for more people instead of stick it to one don't make it a tick box exercise but make sure it's in the dna of everyone because once again in the future you're still hoping to scale or grow uh, so you're in it for the long term and um, you don't want to fix afterwards so make sure you start in time um, make technical controls physical controls um, and walk the walk talk the walk. Nice. Anything else you want to mention that I forgot to ask you? Um, from this side, well, I, I can speak for hours, but I think for now, uh, I hopefully uh, we were able to give a bit more insight into what is compliance about. Yeah. Um, and um, um, well, as said, I'm always here to help. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for helping. Thank you for being a mentor. It's super important. We can only do what we do with the help of our great mentors and you're one of them. So thank you for that. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure being here. Your pleasure was all mine. And if you like this episode, don't forget to follow us everywhere. Good podcast and good media is at. So we are on Instagram at Starter Bootcamp. We're also on YouTube, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, really where we're we're in a lot of platforms. It's hard to keep track of it all. So don't forget to follow us on your favorite one. And I will see you at our next episode. Thank you. Thank you.